Very tall cloaked black figure. Fairly regularly, four or five times a month, I suffer from sleep paralysis. This normally happens when I am very tired. Through research, I have found that it is when you're really tired that it's most likely to occur. In a normal episode of sleep paralysis, I get the usual unable to move sensation and a pressure on my chest feeling, and I can't move my head. There are no presences in the room or anything like that. I can normally snap myself out of it pretty easily through breathing exercises and stuff. Sometimes, a couple times a month, I get sleep paralysis, but it's not like normal. I can't move, but there is no pressure on my chest and I am wide awake and I can move my head. I can look around my room like normal. But the thing that scares me the most about these particular episodes is that there is a very tall black cloak figure at the foot of my bed in front of my bedroom door. I would say about seven to nine feet tall, just, just standing there. I can't see any arms or any features at all for, for that matter, no face, but I can feel it looking at me. I feel intense fear when I see it. My breathing becomes extremely fast. It feels like I am hyperventilating. I tried to, to do what I normally do to get myself out of sleep paralysis, but it does not work. It almost feels like a dark figure is causing it and will let me go when it wants to. Normally, after a few minutes, I just disappears and I am back to normal. At this point, I turn the light on and try to get back to sleep with the light on. This normally happens around 3 a.m. Never exactly at 3 a.m. Always just before or just after. This has been happening since I was about 12 years old. I am now 22 years old. My sisters have both had the same experiences as me on several occasions. I must add that my grandma passed away at the end of last year. This seems irrelevant as this has been happening long before she passed, but bear with me. I saw the cloak figure last week at the foot of my bed. I could still move my head around, etc. I was extremely scared. I moved my head to the side so I wasn't looking at it and I saw something else. It was a disembodied head floating at the side of my bed. The face looks similar to my grandma's, but it looks slightly different, like something pretending to be her. It also had an evil smirk on its face. I tried to look away again, still unable to move my arms and legs. The head followed mine, and the smile got bigger and bigger and more and more menacing. It felt like it was, it was mocking me, then it just faded away. So did the tall hooded figure, and I just kind of jolted in bed and got all the feeling back in my body. Now, like I said earlier, every time I seen this figure, it was around 3 a.m. This time when I woke up, it was closer to 4 a.m. So this either means that it just happened later than usual, or the ordeal itself lasted about an hour, although it only felt like a few minutes. This has really bothered me more than normal, as the hooded figure didn't really do anything. I, I didn't really bother researching it, even though it felt evil. It wasn't causing any actual harm except for scaring the crap out of me. It's just that this time the floating head that looked like my grandma that makes me think that something else is at work too. Can, can someone shed some light on this? Thank you for taking the time to read my story. Black Cloaked Figure I've had lots of experiences with the paranormal in my life. They have mostly been little things. More stake out in my mind than others, this one is one of the many that do. This is not my first, but it is the earliest bigger one that comes to mind. I think this occurred over a few months when I was 11 or 12, 1998 or 1999. I would say in the summer because you were always staying up late. First, a little backstory. I live in Western Massachusetts, in the same house that I lived in my whole life. When I was younger, my best friend, Lula, I'll call her as it's a nickname of hers. Lula lived next door to me, literally right there. It is a duplex with thin walls. We were always over at each other's houses. I would say she lived there when I was seven or eight until I was 14. So 1994, 1995 to 2001, we both believed in the paranormal all of our lives because we had no chance to really not, I guess you would say. Her room was in the middle room upstairs, same as mine on the other side. Our room shared a wall. 
The back room on her side at the time had no door but a doorway. The light in her room would often go off by itself as the wiring was faulty. It was just a lamp that was plugged into an outlet that was wired to a switch on the wall. Also, we would often be alone in the house on weekends as her mother and mother's boyfriend would go away on weekends at times, which we loved when they did. One night, we were there by ourselves, we were probably 11 or 12, in her room just hanging out listening to music. The light suddenly goes out, and the music too, being that the radio was also plugged into the same outlet as the light, so we didn't get too creeped out because we were used to that. We just would reach out into the stairway and jiggle the wire it was in a casing to get it to come back on. This time we happened to look into the back room and saw and saw this black cloaked figure standing there. It just looked like someone in a hooded cloak but no face, no eyes, no, no, just all black. Like someone wearing a faceless mask it was. It starts slowly moving towards us. We start screaming like scared little children, needless to say. I think we were more scared because of the energy of it. It felt very negative. After a while, the light came back on and it was gone. We didn't sleep that night, but we stayed there. Just grabbed some flashlights and candles in case the light went off again. Now, we would see this thing on other occasions and basically the same thing would happen. That this happened, I noticed it would never come past the doorway to the back room. One of the more memorable times we saw it, we were not alone. Now, this was not something that we could have been shadow play or things in the room that were arranged a certain way, you know? Not every time the lights were off, we would see this thing, believe me. We tried figuring it out if we could debunk it. Also, I don't know if there were any specific patterns to the events of us seeing this figure. We didn't keep records of it. Lula's niece was with us as she was spending the night. Lula's dog was also up in the room with us. The lights went off and again we see the figure. The dog starts growling and barking as we're screaming. One thing I find odd is how no one would ever come up when we were screaming like it was soundproofing the room even though she had no door on her room either. The last time I ever saw this thing was one night when I was in my own room. I was sleeping and woke up for no reason that I could figure. I looked into the center of the room and saw it, just standing there. Of course, I was making sure that I was actually awake. Pinching myself under the covers, I just stared at it until, until I fell back asleep. This thing did feel negative in nature, but it never did anything aside from just being there, really. To be honest, I'm not sure what it was or why it was there. And I've never seen it again since that night in my bedroom many, many years ago. It would be interesting to see if anyone else has experienced anything like this. Also, what your thoughts are on it. I don't need help with it as it is not something that is currently happening. The Dark Cloaked Figure and Nightmares Back in January of this year, 2008, my husband and I moved into our first apartment. Being a country girl and not a big fan of the city, I was hesitant about it. He was currently looking for a new job, and I was working overnight at Super Target, so I would always go to bed about noon and wake up an hour before I had to go to work. One evening, my husband came in to wake me, and he saw a dark cloaked figure in the corner near the closet. He reached for the light and when he looked back, it, it had disappeared. After I woke, he told me he had seen a dark cloaked figure with a sculpt type face. Not too worried about it though, and thinking that it was just a shadow he had seen, I went to work. About two weeks later, we found out we were going to have a baby. I was about seven weeks along at the time. During those two weeks, we had a series of nightmares. His were of losing me and having to raise the baby alone, and some of losing both the baby and me. One nightmare that he had reoccurred more often. He said he had killed me, and he couldn't understand why he had killed me. But he had to raise the baby alone, and he was so depressed about it when he told me that he was, he was crying. I had a nightmare as to why I couldn't pick up my baby. 
because my hands would go right through him. And when I would walk through this house we were in, there was blood on the walls and the floor, so I couldn't understand exactly what was going on. But that it made me worry that I was going to lose the baby. One night, again, he goes to wake me up and sees the figure standing over me in bed. From the doorway, he told me to wake up, so I sit up in bed and I still didn't see it, but I felt something was there. I had woken up from a nightmare earlier while I had been sleeping before work and thought someone was there, but went back to sleep regardless. That following morning at work, I I had started cramping really bad. As soon as I got home, I called my mom and then the doctor. The nurse at the doctor's office said I had to make an appointment and that they would call me within 30 minutes to have me come in or go to the hospital. Well, my mom called me back and told me to put pillows under my hips and feet and told me to calm, relax, and not to worry. I didn't go back to work that night since my manager still wouldn't pull me from the heavy lifting even though I had told him the day I found out that I was pregnant, he still wanted me to lift things that were way over 20 pounds. I shortly found a new job and I quit Super Target. I had told my mom about it and she told me to pray over both the baby and the apartment. Other than that, things would go missing, then turn up again a day or so later. I worried for the longest time that it was out after our baby. I'm not certain, but we moved in May and we haven't had anything bad happen. Only nightmares I get are the ones that involve snakes and spiders or having to raise the baby by myself, which isn't going to happen with as much concern as he has for our relationship. But this concludes this odd occurrence in my life. I have more. But, but I'll write them another time. Twelve Cloaked Beings Three years ago, I saw twelve men in hooded cloaks, almost like grim reapers. They would change sizes and would sway from side to side, sometimes floating in midair and sometimes they had green eyes and would have no face, just darkness where the hood went over their face. And other times their faces looked like Siths from the movie Star Wars, which was really scary. I would see them sending energy and communicating with each other through waves of circles and spirals in the air. One night I tried to focus on one of them and saw a yellow light coming straight at me. Next thing I knew, I was waking up the next morning, not remembering what happened. My boyfriend, who was also spiritual, was able to communicate while meditating with them, they surrounded him in a circle, and afterwards he told me he thought they were protector beings from the light. I tried to go on with my life as normal, but kept seeing them whenever I went to work, shopping while I was showering, etc., which got me fired from my job because I started talking about them and asking people everywhere if I saw them too. I knew by letting them in, I had let lower energy spirits into my life too, so I decided to get Ghostbuster people to my house and send all the low energies through the light to be cleansed. After they got rid of the negative energy, they motioned me to come through to my dining room with them. I sat down, and straight away they asked, What do you want us to do with the twelve hooded beings? I was shocked. I hadn't mentioned the, the 12 beings because I wanted to check if these Ghostbuster guys were the real deal, which they were. One of the women Ghostbusters then told me they would, they would like to communicate with me and had been trying for some time now, but I hadn't heard them because of my fear of them. I agreed for the being to talk through one of the women who was a clairvoyant and would channel them through her. As she began talking to me, I could see one of the beings miniature size on the wall, behind her sending her the waves and spirals of energy directing into her mind. They told me they were not protectors, but to call them masters, and that I had contracted them in heaven before I was born to guide me through life spiritually and emotionally, and that they were there to help me be a starseed and to accomplish my goal on earth, my mission to help the people and the earth. They then went on to tell me my fear was holding me back that I could not go forward without letting my fear go and embracing them. I thought to myself that if I let the spirit guides I had to put up to protect me, I would be overwhelmed by negative spirits as well as beings from the light. The being still speaking through the clairvoyance then told me I could have anything I want spiritually and all I had to do was ask. 
I thought to myself in my own head without speaking that I wanted to fly one day. The being quickly responded through the woman, one day you will. This scared me completely. The being had read my thoughts and responded to my question that I had only thought of but not said out loud. I, I thought something else to see if it was really happening. And suddenly I could see my name glowing on the dining room wall, almost as if someone had written it with a glow in the dark pen. As the conversation was ending, with the beings from the light, they mentioned to me that if at any time I was too afraid or couldn't deal with it, that I could ask them to leave and they, they would. This eventually happened four months later because letting them in, I had opened the door to every spirit around me, which I could not deal with because my fear of the unknown had consumed me and made me almost nocturnal. I'm glad they're gone now, but I'm still unsure if they were really from the light or not, and if anyone else has ever seen or heard of them before. I just want to know if anyone else is a star seed or star person who has contracted guides and cloaked robes to help them with spiritual and personal growth.